You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Thank you for thank you for joining us on this super special holiday show. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And we are joined by two very special guests for this holiday show. This is our fifth bubble show, Jim, going into our fifth year. And I am so pleased to have Eileen Newman, uh, Director of Strategic Marketing at WGBH in Boston, and also my wife's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel Short, owner of the Sewing Loft in Avon, who's been on our show just recently and was such a blast. We're having her back to drink with us. I'm honored to be back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both for joining us. And Jim, this is the Bubble Belt Show, right? It is. Uh, normally, we do a kind of a bubbly special for the holidays, and we tend to focus a lot on French wines. And I thought this year, you know, Italy has been ignored. So let's go ahead and just do something right on the Bubble Belt. Um, if you're familiar with Italy, the northern part of Italy stretches uh, from Piedmont in the northeast up to uh, Emilia Romagna in the northwest. And that whole northern stretch is referred to sometimes as the Italian bubble belt. So everything we're going to have tonight is from that area. It's a great name. You'll never forget the bubble belt after watching <laughs> the show because you'll just it'll just stick there. That's right. The bubble belt is just a phenomenal name. It rolls off the tongue. And going into our fifth year for a show called the bubble belt, I'm really excited about. And I'm actually really excited about everything we're going to be tasting tonight. So once again, thank you ladies for joining us. Yeah, and I think we should us. jump right into one of our first sparklings yeah. or proseccos i should say this, yeah this is a prosecco that we're going to have right now and we've done proseccos in the past but this is a new one for yes, us. yes this is a uh, the valdo brut prosecco from the veneto region of italy and uh it had it's consistently rated high three to three and a half to four stars over the last three to four years and it's actually it comes from a very small vineyard uh that was first established in the early 20s and then bought i believe by the bola family in the 40s and they've been making consistently highly rated wine since and this is one of their star gems it's a very reasonably priced prosecco and uh, i'm looking forward to tasting it so i hope you ladies are too i sure am so you can see that by straw color that means there is a little yellowness in there which is usually a, a sign that you might have a little bit more flavor in the chardonnay <laughs> profile but we'll see it's like a very pale gold That's wonderful. Good. Delightful. And I it, like that. That's typical of a Prosecco, too. It's, um, if you compare this to champagne, you're getting a larger, lighter bubble, uh, so it's frothier in the mouth, and that makes it easier to drink. <laughs> the champagne sometimes kind of fights with your mouth a little bit. I like it. It's not too dry. You know, it, it's funny because I'm, I'm, we just talked about this before the start of the show, and mine is already gone. <laughs> and uh, you see the ladies, they're trying to be so delicate. I know, I just remembered. I'm like, oh. So delicate and nice. Drink up, Eileen. Just drink it down because, remember, this is a holiday show, so you're going to be drinking this in this, this way. Got to make room so, for a round two. Yeah, the more bubbles, the better. <laughs> but I think, Jim, this is an example of why well, people like Italian Prosecco because it is so easy to drink. Mm -hmm. It's so smooth. You don't get that yeast in this you do in actual right. champagne. Right, and that, that goes back to how they, they do the second fermentation. With champagne, they do the dosage, which is the second fermentation in the bottle. Uh, with Prosecco, they do a second fermentation in a giant vat, and so that the yeast really kind of disperses better, and you don't get that same yeasty characteristic with Prosecco. And yet I find that whether it's Prosecco or champagne, I still get a headache the next day. And so <laughs> must be the sugar. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. And I think, Eileen, you said you just recently were in Italy for a I was. Time. In March, I was in Milan. Oh. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, I had a lot of Prosecco. Oh. <laughs> but you did not bring anything back for us, did you? I did not. Oh, well, I'll hold you to that next time. So I, I would say that uh, for the first taste, Jim, I think that was very enjoyable. Lovely yeah. and light. I liked that. And yeah. the price point of this is very accessible. I mean, it's available locally, and if not, you can certainly search online. I'm sure you can find it. It's between $12.99, $14.99, which is a very reasonable price right. for a good quality Prosecco. Yeah, it's right in our sweet spot. It is. <laughs> so I can see everybody's glass is empty. So... Once again, we're going to go into something a little different now. We're going to go into a rosé Prosecco oh, sparkling. I didn't know such a thing Isn't existed. 
There are sparkling rosés. Yes. And normally you'd serve a, a rosé first, but we tried this before the show, and it's it's got kind of a heavy body to it. So we've just we decided to do the prosecco first, and then move on to the rosé. Well, that's where we disagree. Jim thought it was a heavier body. <laughs> I didn't oh, necessarily agree I, with that. I, I, all right. So well, we'll chime in and, and see. And yet, who Jim wins. won. <laughs> but this is called Enza. Enza sparkling rosé from again from the Veneto region of Italy, and I love the color on this, and I was really surprised that. An Italian sparkling. I did it again. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, look at what I'm doing to you. I'm <laughs> trying to get you drunk. The first time on the show, I'm trying to get you hammered. I'm, I apologize for that. Again, the more bubbles, the better. So once oh, again, you don't you need can, a lot of help. <laughs> when I first saw that they, this was available as a rosé, I was really excited because I happen to like rosé. And to have a sparkling rosé along with the fact that we're doing the Italian bubble belt show, really just, I went crazy. I just went nuts. Can I ask what makes a rosé a rosé? Well, I can know what the answer is for this one, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of different reasons as to what makes a rosé rosé. Um, if Jim wants to answer Well, it's, no. it's a choice by the winemaker. Uh, they want to add some color to the wine. When they press the grapes, uh, they're using a red grape, and they leave the skins in contact with the juice, typically between 18 hours and 36 hours, and that imparts a little bit of color to the wine. Obviously, the, the darker they want it, the longer they leave the skins in contact. Okay. Yeah, and to add to that, uh, this Enza Spark Rosé, or Prosecco, it refers only to the wine region a lot of times, Prosecco referring to the wine region. Um, but Jim, you might not have known this, and I did some research on this, and I don't know why we haven't mentioned this. Since 2010, the grape formerly known as Prosecco has been called Glera. Yeah. And we didn't discuss that the last few times. We've, though, so uh, we? I don't know if we talked about it on the show. I've had this discussion a couple of times. Um, over the, outside, over the, yeah, but up in Boston, your fancy wine club. <laughs> but it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the Italians are doing the same thing that the French are doing with the Champagne name. They're trying to protect the Prosecco name. Yeah. So, you know, the Australians were making Prosecco and Chileans were making Prosecco and the Italians said, hey, you know what? You're not going to make Prosecco anymore. You're going to make Glera. And this particular one you're asking about the color is 95% Glera and 5% Merlot. Okay. So that's another reason you, you're going to get that little bit of a color difference in it. Uh, you, you can get this a lot redder, as, as Jim's going to show later on in the show what he has. But uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. So. I have no doubt. All right. All right. And Cheers. Yeah. Tell us how much body you think this has. Okay. Hmm. It's a little sweet. I think it has more than the first one. I agree. But it's not super heavy. Okay. I don't think it's heavy either. <laughs> I could see it going either way. It could have gone first. I have an issue because of the sweetness. But it also works because of the second. sweetness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, you bring up a good point. I, I agree with you on that. <laughs> I think what I notice on the, the, the second taste, because we tasted it this before the show, just a little bit, is this has a little bit more yeastiness in it to me, similar to what a champagne would have. It does. But that's actually the fruit aspect of this particular, the bubbles. And even the tasting notes say um, green apples, strawberry. Um, I don't necessarily get strawberry, but I do get a little bit of green apple in this. I get the green apple too. So and the yeast right. makes it more bubbly? No, 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 but I mean, a lot of times if you drink real champagne, there's a yeastiness to it. Um, at least for my palate, and sometimes people can find that a little astringent, a little uh, minerally. Um, mm -hmm. I sense that a little in this particular one, which I like, but I enjoy that. So, yeah, yeast is what sparks that second fermentation. So, anytime you have a, a sparkling wine, they've added yeast to it to create that the, the bubbles. Oh, and, and these, just, these are fine bubbles. These yeah. are. <laughs> Who knew? So, and the price point on this is a little higher. This between fifteen ninety nine, eighteen ninety nine, in that price range. You sometimes will pay a little bit more for a rosé or anything mm -hmm. uh, a little off the beaten path for a Prosecco. Still affordable, though. Certainly affordable. And it's New Year's. You want to splurge a little bit. I mean, that's certainly accessible. Well, you know, compare this to the show we did last year. We had the $200 bottle of Krug. Well, well. No $200 bottles for us today? <laughs> now you see, I, Maybe yeah. these two. As soon as we'll you see. said that, okay. now the girls will think we're yeah, cheaping I, them exactly. down. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but you're part of something we've never done before. Look at it that way. The bubble belt. Just Love always it. remember the bubble belt. The bubble yeah. belt and my Italian heritage thanks you for that. <laughs> I completely forgot that also, Rachel, so say I was thinking of you. So once again, <laughs> this is thumbs up. I get two thumbs up for right. votes for yeah. tasting tonight. Two winners, Bob. Uh -huh. yep. Pick some good stuff tonight. Well, next up, we're going to try an obscure grape varietal called Famoso. This is a Devo Famoso. And Famoso's a grape that kind of died out. Um, you know, we talked about Carmenere a couple of years ago, which was the grape that was predominant mm -hmm. in Bordeaux up until the, La the phylloxera louse wiped everything out. Thank you. The same thing happened in Italy. All the vineyards got wiped out by that phylloxera louse, and the, fam the Famoso grape, which had been grown uh, quite extensively throughout the region, disappeared. In fact, 
they didn't think there was any more left in the world. And then in 2000, they stumbled across two vines growing in a small little farm. And today, wow. 15 years mm -hmm. later, we've got about 10 winemakers who are experimenting with this grape. And they love it because it doesn't have a whole lot of acid, um, but they can, do, they can make it into a bubbling wine or a, a still wine. They've, uh, they're doing experiments trying to figure out if it's going to be best out of stainless steel or oak or uh, glass lined. It's a work in progress. Yeah. That's, so that's basically yeah. what we're so tasting. So yeah, you're today. tasting someone's experiment right now. All from two little vines. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think we had this on the show last time. It was just a wine, right? It wasn't a sparkling, correct? For the grape varietal? We've never, well, you're thinking of the Carmenere. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we had a Carmenere on the show before. We've never, I've never had a Famoso on the show. And so I'm assuming you didn't have a Famoso and uh, I didn't. You didn't. No. Well, if I did, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, $200 bottles be damned. We've got the first right. All right. That's there right. you go. Right? It's special. <laughs> and we haven't discussed the bubbles in all these tonight, but these are also fine bubbles in this, too. Similar to yep. what you would get in a real champagne. Yeah. It's, it's very, very similar. Pretty. They're tiny. Yeah. I like the littler bubbles. Tiny, better. petite little bubbles. Yeah. All right. That puts a smile on my face. Mm, that's delightful. That is wonderful. I get a little bit of honey in there. Oh, that's interesting, honey. Slight bit of honey yeah. and maybe I some apple. I get that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Little bit, like, slight creaminess. It's getting it, it's progressively sweeter. Yeah, this is a creamier wine, mm -hmm. creamier style. I like um, it. I, the the notes I had for this said you should get a little lemon curd. Oh, I could see that. And it's but it's not a very tart taste. No, it's not tart or acidic. And you got to remember, I mean, you're going to be watching this show in December. Christmas is right around the corner. New Year's, of course, is what this show is themed. Uh, New Year's is what this show is themed for. You're going to be pairing this with a lot of different kind of appetizers. Generally, you drink bubbles during the appetizer portion of mm -hmm. the meal. Though, of course, Jim and I drink bubbles all the time. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> and so does Rachel. Yes, as, uh, I, as I do. Uh, yes. I'm going to assume <laughs> you do too, right? But I do. I'm just assuming here. But you can pair the first three we tasted with any type of cheeses, I think, would work mm -hmm. great. Uh, meats. Yeah, uh, this will go really well with scallops. Which you still haven't made for us yet, but I, I'll keep talking about those scallops. <laughs> Jim. I have I, not gotten them I yet. tease you with all kinds of You do, but I appreciate so that. that. What kind of a sweet <laughs> pairing would you do? Like, would you do fruit? Would you do chocolate? Does it matter? When you're, when you're pairing with chocolate, you want the wine to be sweeter than the chocolate. Oh, okay. Why is that? Um, that's if uh, we, we did a whole show on yeah. this for yeah. Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> we must have missed that. I, I guess <laughs> we missed that show. <laughs> Probably about two years it ago. It seems counterintuitive, though. <laughs> no, it, it was fascinating. fascinating. Yeah, the, the wine just really doesn't taste very good if, if it's not sweet enough to hold oh. up to the chocolate. Yep. Interesting. And when I was in Sonoma, they actually, we had a, a dessert red and they poured melted chocolate around the rim of a glass and let it harden. And then when you oh. took a sip, it, they mixed together. It was delightful. Brilliant. Yep. It was really nice. But I'm I, stealing that. <laughs> I, I love it. Yes. <laughs> I expect to see that on the next show. A little more work, but I, I love the yeah. concept of it. It yeah. was really delicious. I'd never seen or heard anything like it before. But, it, you know, what Jim was talking about, it is interesting because you think chocolate you can drink with all kinds of wine and you can't. Because we, we had very specific wines we were drinking, and yeah. some of it was just awful when you mixed it. Well, we, we, we made the correct pairings, and then we tried we, mixing right, it up just to experiment. It was awful. And, and we're it doing it live on air, and it just it didn't turn out didn't well. Didn't taste yeah. so good, huh? <laughs> but uh, it was a learning experience, so that was, that was a lot of fun. So yet again, another thumbs up. Yeah, I like this one too. And this one also, under $20. Mm. So. Excellent. Now, that's actually surprised to me, a, a new wine still under production. They're still researching it. Yep. It's still a very accessible price point. Yeah, and I, I don't think you're going to find this in a lot of places. I, I think because it, you know, the production is so small, the, the distribution is going to be pretty limited also. But ask for it. It's fantastic. And is this from Boston? Is this from your area? I got this at Social Wines in Boston. So we don't even, I don't know right now at this point whether this is available locally. As a brand. I don't either. Yeah, okay. I don't, and it, uh, you know, a lot of times we do wines on the show, and if they're not available locally, you can order them online. Uh, I'm not even sure if you could get this online just because the, the quantities are so low right now. Island, do you have a, a place where you shop for, I mean, when you're looking for wine up there yourself? Like, what, I know Jim has a lot of small places, but like yourself, Yeah, you I generally for? like to go to smaller places because I, I really feel like if you find somebody who understands what you like, they can introduce you to other things that you might not necessarily More personal have thought experience. about. Yeah. yeah. And sort of steer you. I think a lot of people, myself included, are, um, you, you find something that you like and you stick with it. And then it's good to have somebody sort of push you out of your, your comfort That's zone. That's why we did this show, because people were so used to sticking yeah. to what they were comfortable with. It's like, come on, guys. There are thousands of wines to try out there. Try something new, because you're going to like it, which is why we've been doing the show so long. That's so. why you're so popular. 
Oh, I don't know. I'm, if you probably noticed, I'm clean shaven Bobby P. So now whether or not this is going to affect the ratings or reviews, I don't know. But They're going to go up. Uh, I look younger, I think, but uh, this is only temporary, guys, so the, the Bobby P. look might be back in a few weeks. Focus we'll, group of four so yeah, far. It's we'll, going we'll see okay. What we'll see Either what look of, is great. Well, thank you very much. But that's only because you like the champagne. You, or the, <laughs> see? <laughs> I did it again. I said champagne. We're very agreeable now. <laughs> exactly. The sparkling. Or the prosecco. Sparkling. The prosecco. Yes. The bubbles. The bubbles. bubbles. The Italian bubbles. Italian bubbles. Now, Italian this, is, bubbles. this is where the fun comes. All right. This so this, right. this last one is kind of an oddball. Uh, this is a Lambrusco. And <laughs> the Italians have been making Lambrusco for quite a while. They were actually really popular here in the United States in the 1970s. And then, you know, the Italian winemakers saw that uh, it was doing so well here, they started to overproduce it. And they, they started coming out with some really poor quality Lambruscos. And Lambrusco got kind of a, poor, a bad name. So people in the United States quit drinking it. Uh, but I think, you know, the wines like this show a lot of quality. And you're going to see what a Lambrusco really should be. Um, but it, it gets kind of confusing because Lambrusco has actually 60 different varieties. Oh, wow. And, okay. yeah, this is, this is a Lambrusco Grasparoso, which is a very common Lambrusco. But they've got uh, Lambrusco Marino, uh, Lambrusco uh, Sorbaro. Uh, on and on and on, uh, you know, 60 different versions of it. So it, if you're an American consumer uh, you're, and you're, you want to drink what we're drinking tonight, you have to go ask for Lambrusco Grasparoso. Okay. Not just go and look at those giant jugs of Lambrusco. That <laughs> right. No, yeah. well, that, I think that's probably the garbage that people got sick of. The back jugs in the with the handles? Yes. Right. Yeah. But you know, there's, there's a place for that kind school. of wine occasionally. Sure. We made sangria out of it. Of our, our, uh, oh. the owner of our wine store told us that don't use good wine for sangria, use the cheap right. stuff. And he was right. That jug yeah. wine worked. <laughs> My first actual experience before I even taste this with a sparkling Lambrusco, if you want to call it, was actually cold duck, Andre's cold duck, mm -hmm. which you would probably, you could technically call a Lambrusco because it was a red wine as a sparkling. Yeah. I know you're probably rolling your eyes right now. I, no, I drank cold duck when I was very young and I uneducated. thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's, you know. Low those many years ago. Yes. <laughs> my taste buds might not be right. sophisticated back then, but that was actually my first experience with a sparkling Lambrusco type mm -hmm. wine. I have not had a lot of this color sparkling over the years. So this I haven't either. Is all right. Lambrusco sparkling? No. Okay, I didn't think so. No. My mom... <laughs> My mom was a big fan of Folinari. I think it's Folinari, Folinari yes. Lambrusco. I believe so, when yeah. I was much younger, she and her friend Terry had many a bottle of Folinari Lambrusco in their single days. So I'm not unfamiliar with Lambrusco. <laughs> this is to uh, Rachel's mama, who's watching over right. in the control room. Yeah. So uh, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, Lambrusco. I actually like Lambrusco, and I think just like a Chianti, even an expensive Chianti, there's a place for that type of wine depending on what the situation is sure. and what you're eating and so forth. So I'm not trying to disparage either one of those. Oh, models. not at all. Absolutely. All right, well, let's right, see what this right. is. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that ain't your mama's cold duck. No. <laughs> no, that's really good. Wow. It's not my mama's full and our really Lambrusco either. Yeah. Right. It's got a little bit of a mm. peppery taste to it, uh, especially coming off the, the last one we just had. Yeah, you can taste and that. And you get a little tannin with this, which is unusual for a sparkling wine. But it's you know common for a, a red wine, so it's 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 kind of funky to be tasting tannin and bubbles at the same time. It is. Time. I, I might even we're going to probably do one more tasting of this one because I know we still got time left in the show. But this is probably the most. The, this is the wine I've been looking forward to the whole night when I saw you bring this in and open it up because I was so excited about the color mm -hmm. and the effervescence and what it was going to taste like compared to what my experience was. And I got to say, I'm blown away by this. This is really good. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that. I find it's not as bubbly as the others. No, it's not, and there's a reason for that. Uh, they, when they store this, they store it very, very cold, and so that kind of kills off a lot of the, the CO2. Okay. That doesn't get as bubbly as other, uh, as the Proseccos and the, the Spumoso that we had earlier. Should you not store Prosecco in super cold or just room temperature? Or? No, well, you want to store uh, white wines and uh, sparkling wines right around, what, 45, 46 degrees? 48 degrees. It, it, every different varietal has its own specific temperature. Uh, Bob and I have talked about this on previous shows. And you know, if, if you own a wine refrigerator and you're just trying to set it at one temperature, you're going to tear your hair out when you start <laughs> buying all these different varietals and stuff them in there. Yeah. So ideally, you should have a fridge for each varietal. Exactly. <laughs> if, if you are fortunate enough to be able to afford 10 fridges. different fridges, fridges yes. Then yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I, have we asked this question um, to you in the past? Do you guys collect wine yourself or do you store wine or you just buy it as you, as you want it? 
I just buy it as I want it. So you don't like have a little yeah. section in your house where you have like three or four or three dozen bottles of wine? No. <laughs> At most, we've had a couple that we aged for a while yeah. and then we couldn't wait and just busted into them. So, um, yeah, we, it, wine doesn't stay very long around our house. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Keeps you going back to the store. We like to enjoy yeah. it. But, you know, Jim, also, you know, we were talking about temperature, but you know, this is the bubble show. And bubbles, to me, you need, you need a little Christmas to them. They, they should be chilled. Right. They shouldn't just be sitting out on your table during any holiday. They should be in some type of bucket, keeping themselves chilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I was talking about earlier was the, the winemakers actually storing this at a much colder temperature than normally uh, wine would be stored okay. at. Okay. Before it gets to us. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that's what's affecting the bubbles. I see. Now, when you were in Italy, Eileen, uh, did you have anything even close to a red sparkling? Or was it just your basic Prosecco? I didn't, no, just basic Prosecco most, mostly, and then, you know, the heavier red wines, um, Chianti's. Uh, I had a Lambrusco when I was there, mm -hmm. but not with bubbles. You know, it's, I don't know, have you been to Italy? I can't remember. I you. have not. Do, you, do they drink their wines, especially like a Lambrusco, they drink them in sifters, right, or small glass. They don't usually use wine glasses, right? Yeah, they don't use wine glasses. Usually they are um, stemless. Yes. I mean, they, they could be like shaped like a wine glass, but don't have the don't stems. Don't have the stems. Yeah, it seems a little bit more casual. Yeah, I had an Italian friend who drank out of something that looked almost like a mason jar. <laughs> and yeah. I, I thought it was so tacky, but that's what the Italians do. So. Well, I mean, most Italian wines are made to drink like we drink water almost. Yeah. I mean, it's it's what they're, what they're known for. Mm -hmm. um, sure, you can go into the high budget Italian wines, which I think we've done a few times with uh, Tony. Yeah, the Barolos, the Barbarescos, mm -hmm. the Killer Bees, yeah. And they are out there. There are wines in that price range that are kind of astronomical that you would unex be not expecting for an Italian wine. Yeah, so like, have you ever been to Santarpio's in East Boston? It's not a yet, pizza no. place, and they serve the wine in almost like juice glasses. <laughs> yeah, a typical Italian style. Yeah. So if you don't mind, Jim, can I just have one more Absolutely. splash of that yeah. red? I don't know if anybody wants to join I on this one. I think we all should. Sure. And I, I know there's food on the table. <laughs> For the show. Um, <laughs> For the good of the show, yes. I might suggest to try a piece of cheese or meat with this, only to see how it will hold up if you're using this as a dessert, or I'm sorry, as an appetizer wine. Well, this is supposed to pair very well with savory foods. Okay. okay. So, yeah, try some meat. And they've got a saying in Italy, you know, if, if you're eating food, you're drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> I dare say it's more, if you're existing, you're drinking wine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> swallowed wrong. First okay, time, Bobby. First time on the show, I swallowed wrong. <laughs> but the cheese does pair well with this particular wine. It does. Actually, yeah, it tastes nice. Very nice. It's almost, it's a little bit dry. A little bit. It's dry enough for me because I don't mm -hmm. like anything overly sweet. And I think a lot of uh, people who watch our show know we tend not to like anything overly sweet for wine. Unless it's an appetite. Uh, Aperitif or something. Yeah, the aperitifs and uh, the rieslings get a little sweet, and I, you know, I prefer rieslings for you know Thanksgiving pairings, but with riesling, it's got such high acidity that kind of cuts into the sweetness. Uh, they need the sweetness to balance out the acid. Um, they, a lot of people steer away from riesling, and I've I've always been an advocate. Try it, and especially with Thanksgiving. Well, and there's a lot of rieslings out there that aren't overly sweet too. That are right. just delicious, and they're, they'd surprise you because I think everyone's expecting every riesling to be super right. sweet, and that is not always the case. I found. Yeah, riesling got a bad name, just like Lambrusco got a bad <laughs> name because the the Germans were sending all their garbage over here, <laughs> and and here in the United States we thought, oh, the riesling's garbage. Let's Forget stare it. away from that. Yeah. So because it's the holiday show, I got to make the rounds. I got to ask everybody what they're doing for New Year's this year. Any plans? Are they in stone, or you're still? It's a work in progress. I'll start with the ladies. Uh, Eileen? I usually have dinner with friends, um, and actually with a friend who is a big wine collector. So I usually have like a good bottle of wine. How nice. What, yeah. Just one? <laughs> well, one that's really good. Okay. <laughs> and then it's all downhill from there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which is always the way to start, because some sometimes you wait to open that good bottle. To no. Drink, way it while, too nope. late. Drink it while your palate's fresh. Absolutely. Yeah. Rach? General, my husband and I have started a tradition the past several years of spending New Year's Eve just with each other, and we get a couple bottles of Gloria Ferrar champagne from our favorite um, place in Sonoma, and we do drink those first uh, because we don't want to waste the Gloria Ferrar champagne, and then um, as the night progresses, we, load down, we lower down the lights and we actually play um, a lot of Wii games. We Wii Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, generally just enjoy each other's company, but it's really fun, and we end up staying up real late. That is freaking cute. <laughs> it sounds fun. It's a blast. Wow. 
And Jim, I don't think you have anything set in Not stone. Not this year. Yet. You know, I used to throw a black tie party here in Hartford. You did. And some of the best. The whole city was invited. Mm. Uh, but I'm, I'm no longer living here, so I don't do that anymore. We do miss those. Yeah. Actually, that, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to come back. Maybe next year I'll come back and rent some space. Well, if you resurrect you it. Yeah. yeah. It's offshore, let me know. I will, get, I will give you a call. Yeah. The whole state's invited. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> so as we're going to make the rounds, we've got about another five minutes left, I believe, in the show. So I want to see what everybody's favorite bubbles was tonight. I'll go, with, obviously, Eileen, you first. I liked the bookends. I liked the oh. Prosecco and I liked the um, Lambrusco the best. So two thumbs up on those. Two thumbs up on both of those. Rich? I really liked the first one. Um, I wasn't, the second one was a little too sweet, a little too much yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the Lambrusco, but I liked the, uh, these two guys. The Prosecco and the Famoso? Yes. Fascinating. Yep. I loved them all. I'm giving everything a thumbs up tonight. <laughs> uh, if I have to pick a favorite, though, I'm going to go with the Famoso. Okay. And just because it was so unique, and I, I loved, I got a little bit of that lemon curd taste, and it, it really spoke to me. It was it, delicious. Yes. They, like you said, Jim, they were all good tonight. I mean, Jim, we, we haven't had too many dogs lately, <laughs> but these were all so uniquely good. It's going to be tough for me to pick, but I'm going to, my first choice has to be the one at the end there. The, the Lambrusco? The old Lambrusco, only because it just brought back a lot of memories from my first experience with red wine mm -hmm. being a sparkling type, even though it was an Andre. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, maybe that's what it is. It's more nostalgic, nostalgic yeah. than anything yeah. else. But you're right with the Famoso. I think it's so uniquely different yeah. that it really is uh, is exciting to taste something like that. So I want to thank you for that, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. I, the whole point of the show is to bring on great wines that I find. <coughs> Mission so, accomplished. Yeah. As we go into our in 2016, as we're wrapping things up here, Jim, what do you want to do uh, in 2000? So what do, what haven't we done in 2016 that we want to? Well, do? I I was at a wine tasting about a month ago and met a guy who was distributing Israeli wines. And you would think the Israelis don't really grow very good wine or make very good wine, but they, I had some really good stuff. So I have heard that. That would be interesting. So that might be an interesting that's, show. That's going to be one of our shows next year. You never get tired with the shows. There's always shows that we can do. That, that, uh, there are a million different shows we could do, and uh, we'll, we'll be in our 90s with gray hair, <laughs> still drinking wine. We will. And I, I want to thank both of you ladies for being on the show, both Irene Oh, thanks and for and having Rachel. me. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was right. a pleasure as always. I apologize for those early pours where, you know, I was trying to get you to. <laughs> no drunk. apologies necessary. I think it worked out well. I hung well. in there with you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I know, like I said, uh, with the new year coming up, uh, there's going to be a lot of exciting things coming from two guys and a lot of wine. And hopefully uh, you guys can be part of that. Uh, we look forward so. to all of it. Excited. And I want to thank you for watching the show up there in Boston, Eileen. I, I watch it, it all the time. I and love I, it. I appreciate it very much. And this is just a hobby for me and Jim, but we uh, certainly appreciate the fact that we have so many loyal viewers to watch the show. So and thank you again. Just a quick reminder, if you want to watch previous episodes of our show, you can catch those on whctv.org or on youtube.com. And if you have a question or comment that you'd like Bob and I to address here on the show, please friend us at Facebook. You can find us at Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. We spell a lot of L-O-T-T-A. Uh, just friend us and send us a message and we will uh, answer your question right here on the air. So until 2016, I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And keep all of us in your, your wine. wine.